how do games like Dragon Age Origins, The Witcher 3, or Baldur's Gate 3 remember a choice made 10 hours ago and use it to completely change your playthrough? How do they manage all that complexity? The first thing that comes to mind is a bunch of if else statements, and that's actually what I did in my first game. Let's see it in action. Okay, that went smooth, but let's give it another try. Oh, what just happened? Let's go line by line. We were asked for input, and we chose the first option. Then, we were asked again, we picked the second option. But, the keys wasn't covered in the code. Yeah, sure, a quick fix would be to just add a missing GIF and call it a day. But, if we keep doing that, the logic grows messy real fast, and the code becomes unmanageable. So, what's a better approach? Let's first break down the structure of a narrative system. We're given a choice with a number of outcomes, say 2 in this case. One of them might lead to 3 different options. Some of those can be locked behind conditions. One might have an immediate consequence. Two different options might have the same outcome. Then, you might have a bit of back and forth dialogue, not meant to branch the story, but what context before a new narrative is unlocked. In an RPG, we're not following just one path. We're tracking multiple story threads at once. It kinda looks like a graph, more specifically a directed graph. To manage this, each narrative block gets a unique ID, and as the game progresses, the narrative system tracks the current block based on that ID. But what if we want to run multiple narrative threads in parallel? We fix this by assigning an ID to each thread, and then keep track of each thread's current block separately. Alright, we got the structure. Now, how do we handle conditions and consequences? In a big game engine, you might have a scripting system that runs custom logic. But in a smaller engine, like mine, it's enough to define any number of condition types and run them through a simple switch. Same goes for consequences. Now, let me show you how I implemented this in my own engine. The game I'm developing is narrative driven. The player makes choices based on suspect files, and each choice leads to another file or to a document. These documents exist to push the story forward and give more context on how your decision affects the world. They can be things like newspapers or letters. Sometimes a choice is tied to two items, and the final outcome is decided by a random factor. Some files have a special connection called a related document, and is meant to help the player make a choice. To implement this system, I created a base class that holds the ID and the virtual method to return the document type. Then I made file, letter, and newspaper classes that inherit from it and hold their own specific data. To link the narrative blocks, I created a pointer type. It holds the ID of the next event, the chance it gets selected, if there are multiple options, and the in-game day interval when it should trigger. Each choice holds a vector of these pointers. Related documents use a similar structure, just without the chance or timing info. In the end, the entire narrative graph is saved to JSON. But this file can get huge very fast. So, to optimize loading times and memory, I use the second JSON that maps the offset and stride of each narrative block to its ID. Finally, let's take a look at the story editor I built to make all this manageable. In the editor, I can select nodes, move them, delete links, create new nodes and modify them, and then link them together. It gives me full control over the story, and while it's not an universal tool, it's built exactly for what this game needs, 